All right, so welcome to Marriage Mondays. This, again? Well, yes. it's okay. Um, so hopefully this video, the other one was kind of freezing up, so hopefully this will give us a better quality, uh, with more consistency. Do you want to watch it from your phone to make sure it's coming across as we expect? Okay. So we'll get time for you guys to join back in, as well as for those that are, are just joining us. Okay, I see a couple of views coming in. Okay, good. Thank you. The Jenkins are back. Okay, so it's definitely back up live. You can see the comments on yours too. So I can't see it on here as well. Alright, so we'll let people gradually come on back in. Okay. Alright, um, I'll let you talk. All right, so we just want to uh, just make this official as we do on Monday night. just want to thank y'all for showing up for us again and uh, through the technical difficulties. And I uh, just want to give a, a, a shout out to our bishop and our first lady as they continue to support us in our uh, endeavor to bring forth the word in the way of happy marriages. Um, and we also want to uh, say happy birthday to uh, Trina's father, my father-in-law, Papa Anderson. Uh, for his 70th birthday, which will actually be celebrated tomorrow. Who is Pastor Nathaniel Anderson Jr. They won't know Papa Anderson. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's right. They would not know that, would they? No, they would not. <laughs> but anyway, just want to say a shout out, birth, uh, send him a shout out on his birthday tomorrow. Yeah. And, He's um, 70 years old. With that said, um, just well, we're going to talk about um, how to um, take some of your weaknesses uh, in your marriages and actually make them a strength. And we're going to talk about how to play upon your, your strengths that are already in your marriages. So we got a couple of examples we're going to go over tonight. And it's going to be basically in conversation of what we're telling you. Yeah. Um, maybe a few um, points that we may come come to you with to help you uh, do this with you and your your um, your spouse. But yeah. tonight we're just going to talk just about that. We're sharing our personal experience, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, tonight, the agenda is very, very loose. We just want to have some conversation around our strengths and weaknesses and the way we are applying this lesson of, um, you know, using your uh, creative ability um, to think, using that um, as a way to strengthen those areas of weakness. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to um, kind of share with you guys what we have done, what has worked for us, um, and hopefully to inspire you to apply this information to your own relationship. However, you can glean from it whatever is good for you. Yeah. And we always make this uh, statement, uh, what works for us may not work for you. And we may not have the same issues that you're working through. But there's principle behind everything that we do. That do work. That do work. So uh, we're going to talk about some of our weaknesses first. That's what we wanted to do. Oh, um, Whatever you, however you want to um, attack it. Well, first, I think the most important thing is for us to um, make sure that you guys understand the premise behind the lesson right, that we're talking about. And um, in the lesson, I was looking to see if I had my little cheat sheet, my notes from church, um, from the la from the last few lessons. Um, but I I know it. I think enough to share. Um, so we're talking about how um, we have the power of our mind to use our imagination. God gave us. Um, creative ability. He gave us a mind. And when we understand how to use our mind, and um, by mind, we don't necessarily mean brain. We're mm -hmm. talking about um, your ability to, um, to think, your ability to use your imagination, your ability to um, be creative um, with your thoughts. Right. Um, and we know that um, very often we sometimes neglect the power we have within that's held within our creativity, our ability to create, which is something we have that God gave us. That is a godlike image mm -hmm. or um, we're made in the image of God. And that's one of God's characteristics that he gave to us. And so it's important for us to be mindful, not to neglect that we do have the ability to, um, to create and to think creatively mm -hmm. and to, um, even in our mind, we can imagine things before they actually exist. 
and it, it's to our body, it may seem as if that experience is actually real. So when that um, we encountered those um, events or interactions in real life, it doesn't necessarily catch us at a bad at a place of weakness. We actually have a place of strength because we've already imagined it and come up with some solutions. So you're not just given a knee jerk reaction. You're able to respond from a place of strength versus just responding out of your flesh or uh, with the element of surprise being what guides your uh, your thoughts and your actions. So that's the premise behind the lesson that we are learning. Um, and as usual, we certainly encourage you to refer back to uh, the messages that are posted on our church um, Facebook page, as well as those on Bishop Finish Bush Jr.'s, um, his, um, not website, what is it called? Uh, his Facebook page as well. Um, many messages are posted as well as the um, Bible study messages as well as the Sunday uh, messages. So if you need, uh, we encourage you to get that detailed background. Yeah, if you need a reference point, that's where you need to go to, to understand a little, bit more, a little bit more about what we're talking about. Um, as we get into the lesson and, and start talking about it, a lot of the information that we give you is information that help us on a day-to-day -day basis. We don't want yeah. anybody to think that we're above what we're teaching you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always room for improvement in everything that we even tell you on Monday nights in our lives. Right. So don't don't think we've made it or there's a, a thing that says, you know, you've mm -hmm. reached the pinnacle and you're just all-knowing when right. it comes to marriage. That's that's not what we're here to do. Mm -mm. Everything we do, it, it, if it's improving you, it's also improving us. Right. So, you know, there are things that we've continually have issues with in our marriage. And we're going to talk about two of those. Uh, the first one is communication. And when we have our issue with communication, it's more or less uh, the words that leave my mouth to her ears may not be the message that I was trying intending to send. And the things that she say to me may leave her mouth one way, but when it gets to me and I process it, it may not be the information that she intended for me to get from it. So that's where the issue comes in for us. And I don't think we're the only ones in that boat. I'm sure we're not. So when we when we are communicating, especially about things of the household, things that 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 need to make a decision upon, uh, it's very important that we we learn how to hear that from the other person. And we've done some things over the years to improve it. Uh, as we were talking about this lesson, but we know that's still one area uh, that we struggle in. Got anything to say about it? Um, it's an ongoing process, and I mean, I've. It's just like, well, the two areas that we want to talk about tonight, we do still consider them an area of weakness. One being mm -hmm. communication, even though we have had lots of success in that um, area, it's been hard won. So it's something we have to very be very intentional about putting forth effort. And the way we've been able to grow through those and get to um, a stronger place than we were in the past is we do have to look at those failures that we had. Um, all those times we had miscommunication and then that led to chaos or mm -hmm. led to arguments or led to somebody doing something that was not intended for the other person didn't think they were doing or something getting left undone because there was a breakdown in, in communication. You know, I'm thinking he understood, you know, maybe that I'm just looking outside the window, so I'm thinking about the grass. Maybe he understood that the grass needed to be cut because we had guests coming. Um, and maybe I specified that I wanted it cut before they got here so we're not having all of that going on as people were coming. And he may be thinking, well, I can squeeze it in and get it done just as people are arriving and then clean up or whatever. And it's things like that that will cause frustration between the two of us. And that's just a small example, but it really could lead to something big. Uh, argument, frustration, tension, even as the guests are coming, it may right. you know, end up ruining the activity that, or the social event that we were trying to have because of miscommunication. Um, we've had a lot of that kind of thing, but I think what we have learned, some of the things we've learned to do is we have to make sure that we were heard. And then it's also each person's responsibility to make sure that you're hearing what the other person is saying accurately. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not. Right. Right. So it, it doesn't have to be an agreeable moment, but you have to get the communication out. So you know what you're agreeing to and what you're not agreeing to. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, one thing that we've implemented is when she says something to me, I can repeat it back to her and see if that's exactly what she wanted me to hear. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily word for word verbatim, right. but sometimes I'll say, well, how, how did you understand what I said? Or he will say, well, I understood you to say, or he'll sometimes you'll say, well, I heard you say, you know, X, Y, Z. Is that what you meant? Or is that accurate? But then he might have a rebuttal that's something in contrast to what I said. But the fact is, is that he's making it clear that what he heard me to say, he's given a check to see if that's really what I intended. And sometimes I will absolutely say that is not at all what I said. Yep. <laughs> you know, and then sometimes it's, it's exact. Sometimes I'm surprised at how accurately he not only heard what I said, but the intention behind it as well. Right. And so with that being one of our, our weaknesses, you know, I'm using my, my imagination, my thought process to get aware when she said the first time, I hear it and able to act upon it and not, you know, so we don't keep on going in the same circle of misunderstanding. So that's where the, the lesson comes in at is how strong is your strength. So when you learn how to weakness, uh, how to grow your, your weaknesses into a strength, then that's one avenue that the devil cannot attack you on. So when you get to that point of, you got to imagine yourself communicating well, you got to imagine yourself being able to listen uh, to to the, to the spouse when they're talking to you. You got to imagine yourself being in that spot where everything is calm and you're in a moment of peace where the, the, the information that needs to be transferred is transferred peacefully. Nakisha Jenkins asked, how do you ask that without them feeling that they are slow? Let me tell you something. We've been riding around that bush so many times. Um, and so that is an excellent question it that is. you've asked because we have, because then he gets offended, you know, as if I'm treating him like he's slow, mm -hmm. you know, or then my tone is condescending or uh, maybe making him feel that. So what I learned that I have to do is I have to choose my words carefully. So instead of saying, you know, did you understand? Is that simple enough for you to understand? Or yeah, that's kind of, you don't want to say that. Right. That would be kind of, so what I had to, to do is to learn um, how to rephrase my wording so that it's not offensive to him. Right. And that may vary person to person. So if he says something, if I say something and I'm not sure that he's understanding it, sometimes I'll say, uh, did I choose the right words to say that? Is that, is that, um, did I say that clearly so that you understand, so that you got what I'm saying or did you get what I'm saying? So I try to lean it so that I kind of put the blame on me if there's a misunderstanding, not that he's being slow. Right. You know, because there's a difference in basically uh, speaking or asking that question with the assurance that I know what I said and I said what I said. You know, why didn't you get it? That's a whole different approach rather than to say, um, did I say that well or did I say that correctly? Do you do you hear what I'm saying? You know, or did I communicate that the right way? Uh -huh. You know, or do you, do you get what I'm saying? And that's not so offensive, at least to him. But like I say, you gotta, you have to know your spouse to know what's not offensive to your spouse. And it's your responsibility to learn how to communicate with your spouse. And one practice, you know, so, so the um, other person don't think you're slow or you're trying to treat them like they're slow is, you know, you don't have to use, uh, I don't know, um, you know, eight syllable words to explain yourself when you're trying to have communication because if the person don't know the word that you're talking about, there's no, there's no communication. Uh, like for my wife, you know, there, there are not too many words that she can use that I don't know, but she is an avid reader and there may be some of those words, but when we're communicating there, there might not be very many words that, that um, I don't know. So when we, when we are communicating, I use, you know, since I'm a coach, I simplify my words and I cut my words short. That was not a good communication strategy for her. You know, when we're in the coaching aspect, we want to say as much as we can in as little and as little as as short of amount of words as we could possibly use. But that doesn't work for your spouse if they don't operate like that. So I had to learn how to fully explain myself to her. And she and I think I told her that also, well, you know, I don't use that many words on a daily basis to explain myself. She said, well, I'm not one of your people that you talk to like that. And I said, okay. 
And I just had to learn how to ex, ex, um, explain myself a little better. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. And it took a long time for us to figure out that that was part of the problem. Because it was very frustrating for me for him to throw out two or three words. And I'm, okay, but what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, and he he felt like it should have been that I should have understood what he's saying. I'm like, you are saying nothing. To I me. need a lot more words than what you're giving me if you want me to understand what you're talking about. And it was frustrating. That was a point of frustration. And then also a lot of... um slang mm -hmm. and i you know we didn't grow up in the same um community we grew up in two different um state not states but uh, you know different cities or whatever yeah, backgrounds yeah our backgrounds are a little bit uh different now i mean not drastically but there are some differences and um the way people communicate within a family can be different from uh household to household and so that was one of the things that we, that I had to learn to make adjustment, and he did too, is that our families communicate differently. Yeah, and this is the, and, and y'all, this is the process of becoming one, and you've got to learn how to, to merge those two different backgrounds into that one. You know, she doesn't use as many words, or the, like I've told her before, I'm like, you know, said the same thing 12 different ways. I said, I understood you the first time. Well, And then she'll reply, you didn't give me any indication that you understood. Right. So that's one way that we've learned, okay, well, maybe I just need to tell her the first two times when she said, understood perfectly what she was talking about. So she'll have to continue to tell me the same thing. Yeah. See, Tori typed in, Tori Cummins. I always get Nikia's three words or four, four or five. Yeah, that's because you and you and Key on the same page, <laughs> and it's if he's talking to you, Tori, being his uh, old roommate from college and one of his best friends, they can communicate on that level. But um, I need a lot more words right. in order to make sure that we're we're clear. And see, that's that's one of our weaknesses that we're continuing working on strengthening. I'm using my prayer life. I'm using. Uh, my my imagination and, and and I imagine how the communication would be great one day where we don't have to keep on going over this hurdle. Right. And also, I think another thing that we've done is we've actively pursued more education about whatever the topic is that we were having trouble with. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had to work specifically on communication. Um, and so being intentional about that has helped to give us some things that we can't imagine. But you have to get some new information if you want a, a different result than what you've previously had. Otherwise, you're just kind of spinning in, in cycles, going in circles and, and repeating the same cycle over and over again. Right. But if you want something different, then you have to acquire some new information in order for you to even fathom or, uh, you know, be able to use your imagination to fathom that something different can transpire and that things can be better. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about the other area? Yeah, other area that we're going to discuss tonight is, you know, we're not the only ones in this boat. Um, Go ahead. Is, uh, is money. Is the money aspect of how to run your financial household. Now, this is one that, that continues to develop mm -hmm. as we get older. Right. And we are still in the in the hot seat, just like some of you and some of y'all are not. Y'all don't have no issue with, with the money issue in your household. And so we respect that. So if you don't have money issues in your household, send us some information on this broadcast to, to let us know what you're doing to uh, correct your, your household to that makes your household flow well with the financial aspect of your, your marriage. But for us, we just continue to develop strategies and continue to get more and more information about how to make the money work in our house. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think the thing for us, um, the reason we put this as a weakness is sort of like communication. We don't have, you know, glaring money problems, but we came into the relationship with different um, ideals about money or mm -hmm. different um, perspectives or different priorities um, related and different experiences related to money. And so it's been the process of trying to merge those ideals so that our goals are the same and so that our strategies become cohesive mm -hmm. so that we are not 
you know, using different strategies trying to get to the same goal. Right. And so we've had to do a lot of tweaking over the years for how we choose to manage our finances so that it works well for us. And um, that has been, um, it's been a challenge. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've tried a lot of different um, approaches, and but we have actively sought out um, like education right. or have done research to try to get, make sure that we're on the same page and we've tried to structure our finances different ways. And I'm not even talking about like just getting the bills paid. That's no. that's not even <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having the same financial goals, structuring the money for the household in a given way. I mean, we've been blessed that we've always pretty much been able to pay our bills. That hadn't been a huge issue for us, but we have always had some kind of challenge um, financially that, you know, like I say, it's not necessarily getting bills paid. But it's about developing those long-term strategies, deciding what should be long-term strategies, mm -hmm. how to go about um, saving, how to go about uh, planning for the future, how to go about um, getting those extra things, even like home improvement. Or um, It's always been some head-butting because we, we've had some different thoughts around it. So over the years, we have become more cohesive as we've learned um, other people's strategies or ideas right. that, that are out there. And so as we learn and get exposed to new information, we have learned to adopt some of those things on our own, uh, for our own. But early in our um, marriage, we did have some issues with who and when the bills were going to get paid. Yeah. And how they were going to sure get was. paid. Yeah. Um, well, we, about how. Not how, but who was going to do who, it. Who was doing yeah. what and... What the priority mm -hmm. was. Okay. Yeah, because I like to pay stuff way in advance. So I don't have to think about it. I don't even mind paying stuff way ahead. I don't care about being broke as long as I know my bills were paid. I just didn't That was. I just didn't want to have that worry. I now, didn't want to have to worry. And that was one of the things I, I did worry about being broke. Because if something comes up, then, you know, as a head of the household, you was responsible for making it happen. So that was one of my things when when uh we were paying all the bills and trying to pay bills ahead, we wasn't setting aside money for what may happen. And so we we matured out of that. We did. thank God we matured out of we that. Did. So you know there are things that we're paying ahead and and learning how to to pay stuff off. And so that's where we're going. And in our and we were talking as we were planning this lesson. You know how do I imagine our financial situation to be one day? Uh, totally debt free. Uh, being able to contribute to to the kingdom of God uh, with, with, with what is needed and when it's when it's asked for, or just be able to 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 write a check to the church to take care of something, and to be able to say, okay, if we wanted to go to Jamaica tomorrow, we want to have that money in the account where we can scratch out a check, swipe a debit card, and we'll be on the plane yeah. this weekend. You know, those are the kind of things that I want to be able to do one day, and that's what we talked about. That's how I imagine our finances to be one day. Yeah, and I can get on board with that. I can't. I really hadn't thought it through to that extent, you know. And so that him sharing um, kind of what he has used his imagination to fathom, that kind of helps me be able to get on board with the same program so that mm -hmm. we're, you know, because right now things are pretty cool for us right? financially, but we have to think ahead for, for more right. and think ahead more than just retirement because that's all I really was thinking about, you know, as long as we're comfortable right now and we putting stuff ahead, you know, planning for long term down the road. I hadn't really thought about, um, you know, the freedom to travel easily. And, um, and and that's attainable. But we have to choose that as a goal and actively work towards right. it. And I know he's working on um, he's got a system he's using to pay off some things that he wants to get paid off. Things that are his responsibility and I'm like, that's cool. I can help you out with that some, you know, but he, that's where his mind is and he's moving ahead. And I'm just, you know, thinking long term. And, um, you know, so it's good for us to get on the same page because honestly, I could be helping support what he's doing because the way we have things set up, we have a lot more autonomy than we've had in the past. Right. But that's what is working for us. And honestly, when the two of us work together, 
that's going to be a uh, that's going to strengthen our financial situation. Uh, whereas in the past we tried doing things together and it just we just clashed. But I think we've matured to a point right. that we we're at a point that we can look at that again and um, find out how to make that uh, even stronger in uh, for us. So that's something we're working on and what we're using our creative thinking ability for as far as finance. And he was talking to my dad this weekend right. about some financial options, which I think gave him even more insight and even more to think about. Mm -hmm. So having that conversation with somebody else um, that could give you new information and kind of um, inspire or spark some interest into other uh, financial avenues I think that's a good way for you to be able to use your creativity um, to move forward to a place of strength. Right. And he actually, um, just to his credit, and I don't think he really knew, but he actually reinforced uh, what I had been thinking about and, and, you know, wondering, will this really work? And basically what he told me how he did it, um, it's, it's the same process that I was thinking about. And now I can see that, yes, this, this, this may actually work. But we, it's it, it, we'll see, you know we'll be we'll I'm sure over the years we we we'll, when we're doing this um, we'll continue to develop our money habits and our communication skill to help those out out there that need the help. All right, let's talk a little bit about our strengths because I found it interesting when we were preparing for this lesson. Um, he and I made a um, I guess a act a task mm -hmm. for us to do. Um, and it was for both of us to list our strengths and our weaknesses within our marriage. Well, really, we started out with just strengths. Yeah. And it was very interesting that we had almost the same list in the same order. I think the only thing that was different was the fifth. Yeah. We, we said, well, we'll list, you list five strengths, I list five strengths, and let's come back and talk about it and go from there. And it was the exact same list in the exact same order. And so that um, that made it pretty clear that those are the areas <laughs> of, strength. of strength for us. Mm -hmm. um, and also that last area, um, that fit number five, was the only one that was debatable. Um, he put money as a strength. And I told him the only reason I didn't put money as a strength, because I did consider it, was because I feel like there's still so much room for growth. Um, which there is in all of these, but I feel like that's a, a area that we're constantly having to still be intentional about mm -hmm. our growth. So I said, I don't, I don't think I quite put it on the strength side. It's more of a, a, a weakness that's growing to become a strength. You know? And then we agreed on that. So um, do you want to go over examples of our strength, just to give people examples of what some of your strengths might can be? Yeah, and these are things that we still use um, to, they're still, you still have to do things to strengthen your strengths. You know, you still have to keep these at the forefront of your mind and continue to work on them. Mm -hmm. But these are things that it don't take very much effort for us to do because we know these things about each other. So it don't take us very much effort. It's like the Lord has has put these in our spirit and we don't work them out. And, and this is where we're at with them. And we just know these as our strength. Right. And I'll say, too, before we go over these, these are things that we can always fall back on when we're having um a difficult time these are some of the the um areas that we can get back to unity very quickly on in these areas and these areas allow us to kind of get on the same page and to sort of feel like one again because even though you are one you don't always feel like it right and so these areas of strength that's why we labeled this um broadcast playing to your strengths right because when you go back to those things where you have strength and where you you know that the two of you are on the same page, there's going to be agreement. That makes it easier for you to then be able to uh, talk about, discuss, or come up with solutions for the areas of weakness once you're on the same page with something. Right. And you're really focused on, on what that thing is that brings you strength. And so these are... The areas, um, I think number one and number two, you and I had reversed, okay. but they were the same. And then the next ones were in the same order. All right. And so you can do this activity with you, with you and your spouse, you know, see where y'all feel like each one of where y'all have your strengths and then you can list your weaknesses. But we don't, don't do 10, 15, start out with about oh, three yeah. or four or five, you know, go three, 
for, yeah. you know, just for. Especially if you haven't been married long. Right, please. Yeah, if your marriage is young. All right. So the first one that I listed is uh, both of us are pretty career focused. Um, and with what we plan on doing with the, with, the, with our careers. Um, you want to say anything about That's that? That's just an easy topic for us to right. discuss. Um, is our um, careers, our aspirations, um, even thinking about finances. It's easy for us to even talk about finances if it's related to careers because that's just an area of strength for us we're on the same page we're thinking alike um you know we want each other to succeed in our careers and so it's real easy for us to have those conversations without there being a, a lot of um loaded um history negative history right. or anything that's just an easy place for us and because we're in this uh similar career fields we're both in um education um we kind of speak the same language right well for the most part i mean my career is also medical but i do so much in education that I, and sometimes his education he uses terms and i'm like okay but well, what does that mean because i'm not a teacher even though i'm in education and teachers have a lot of terminology that i have to kind of pay attention and catch on to um because i'm a therapist i'm not a my training was different but i'm in the education setting and sometimes he have to, I have to ask him what do things mean, and the same with my career. If I'm talking about it, um, sometimes he he's usually pretty good at kind of listening and figuring things out. Um, but it's still an easy conversation. There's no offense, you know. It's no offense if he doesn't understand what something means, or if he asks questions about what I'm talking about. Um, if I'm just kind of talking about my day or my career or what I'd like to do, my aspirations. It's an easy conversation for us to have. Um, and then we're having a good flow of communication. Right. And that's just an example how we can get back to those areas that are uh, difficult for us by playing to our strengths. Okay. So, communicate. I mean, career was the first one. Yeah, career oriented. First, first strength. First mm strength. -hmm. Um, you know, for the sake of time, we're going to um, just list the, the, the four that we have in, in um, similar is that we like to travel. Mm-hmm. We definitely like to do that together. Um, we're, that, go ahead. That's a, a big strength for us. I put that one as number one. Oh, okay. Because usually when we travel, having that experience together um, makes us more relaxed. It, it makes us um, more connected. And then it's easier to have those conversations, even if we're on vacation. We might can address a hard topic. Because we're relaxed, we're in a nice place, we're feeling good. And so it can be easier to um, deal with those weak areas when we travel together. Right. Um, we're, we're very much child-focused in raising our children at the level they are, to, mm -hmm. at their level of maturity. You know, we're to the point now, we still have a, 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 a budding teenager in the house with us, but we also have a... a an adult, adult at college, so there. That's two different levels of um, uh, raising a child. You know, at where where our oldest is, we're 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 still raising her, and we still are pretty much hands on. But we're pushing her, you know, to be that independent adult that she needs to be, letting her take on more um, uh, activities that she has. Uh, and the one here, we have to be a lot more hands on. So. You know, we're, we're child focused. One more. Spiritual beliefs. What you want to say about that? I just didn't know where you were going with okay. the child focus. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So, and the fourth one is spiritual beliefs. Yeah, we're definitely on the same page with that. That's always been a strength for us um, is we are both from the time we were young in our relationship in college. Um, that was a place, something we have always done together, which is to worship God, to serve God, um, and to use those concepts that we were always learning, those spiritual concepts, to use those in our lives. And that has been uh, a source of strength, not just a strength, but a source of strength for us. And that has held our marriage together, is our com individual and our um joint Active. commitment mm -hmm. um to to god to christ so to be very honest that um that's a good strength for us right and i know some people do have for some people that's a weakness when you have 
people, you know, your, as spouses, you're on different pages. But then that's just something that you need to figure out how to strengthen that area. All right. And the what? last one was family. I don't know why you don't have it there. Didn't we oh. say family values? You got it right there. Oh, yeah. I'll put it right there. Yeah. And we both have um, very similar uh, family values, our, um, you know, connection to our uh, families where we came from, our mm -hmm. families we were born into. Um, those relationships are very important to us. So we both spend a lot of time with both sides of our um, family. And there's no distress no about it i mean we'll do for um for fam we don't have any problems you know doing for each side of the family whatever we need to do because that's important for us so i don't i'm not gonna get mad if um like before his uh stepmom passed he bought a car uh for her i was 110 percent on board with that because you know it was something she needed something he was willing to do he was able to work it out uh, in the budget behind it a hundred percent, and so things like there's no, uh, um, I don't what's the right word animosity mm -hmm. or discord behind you do what you need to do for your parents. We do what you need to do for your parents. We'll do what I need to do for what we need to do for my parents. And our parents and our uh, families have a very good understanding of how we operate as far as their involvement in our lives. Right. You know, there's, you know, there's no, neither side um, is more important than the other. Exactly. So that's, that's, that's right. That's you know, that's the way we say. operate. Mm -hmm. They're both important to, um, to us. Right. And so, and that's, we don't have any competition where that's concerned. Both sides of the family are very important to us. And so we value, um, we value that. And right. so we prioritize that. We make time to um, visit, even if, you know, like we've had on, on several occasions where there was conflict, something going on on both sides of the family at the same time. Right. And so it's not, you know, well, my family more important. We're going to my family or your no. family. We, we don't have that. Right. You know, it can be all right. Either we, we go to this one, then we come back through and go to the other family or you go to this family event, I go to that family event. We've even had graduations well, we had to split. on the same day, you know, for each side of the family member. I hated missing, um, I think it was Ren's graduation. Mm -hmm. That I, I still hate that I missed his, my nephew on his side of the family. I missed his graduation, but I also didn't want to miss my oldest nephew's graduation. I, you know, and so we made the decision to split and there was no bad feelings about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we just made it clear to the family, you know, your uncle would have been here, but what? you know, there's a graduation on the other side of the family. Mm -hmm. So we don't, um, I, that's just something we've always been real easy to work out. Those issues that come up, those issues don't throw us off when we have conflict, um, you know, conflicting events or something like that. All right. With that said, it's that time. We've been on uh, probably about 35 minutes tonight, even after the the uh, technology. technology. And we're, thank you for, for coming in tonight. We had quite a few people to, to join us tonight. Yeah, and we just want to, huh? What? Go ahead, you oh. spit on me. Oh. So we just want to thank you for, for joining us tonight. Um, you got any closing statements? Or? No, I was just looking back at all the good people that have joined us today. And we appreciate you all very much. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful week and um, hope that you can use this information to help strengthen your relationship. Um, as always, if you have ideas about topics you want us to cover or um, topics you feel like we didn't cover thoroughly enough that you want us to give you more information about, always just let us know and uh, we are open, open to that anytime. All right, with that said, from the lady and the coach. We Good love y'all. Good night. Good night.